Hello everyone, the Nerd Mary here and in this video we will learn about the basics of epithelial tissue. So whenever we classify tissues, we get to see a broad classification of th four types of tissue. The first is epithelial tissue, the second is connective tissue, third is muscular tissue and fourth is nervous tissue. Now the main function of epithelial tissue is to do lining and covering of important structures. So what is lining and covering? So if you see, if you have a body part like this, now the outer, outer surface of the body part if covered by an epithelial tissue then that, is, that will be known as covering to cover the outer side. But if the interior hollow area of that same body part is covered by epithelial tissue then the, inter, the internal presence of epithelial tissue will be known as lining. right? So line means to cover it from inter, interior and to cover means to get it wrapped from outside. So this is the main function of epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue has different shapes. Now, for example, if you can see over here, one, one cell that we have is flat, then another one is cuboidal in shape and the third one is columnar. So this serves as an important method of classification of epithelial tissue. Or else we can say that the nucleus is in case of flat, the nucleus is also flattened. In cuboidal cell, the nucleus is spherical. And in case of columnar cell, the nucleus is elongated. In most of the situations, it's difficult to visualize the epithelial cells in microscopy, particularly the light microscopy. But if you can get to see the nucleus, because nucleus is very darkly stained, you will get to see the nucleus. And from the shape of the nucleus and number of the nucleus, you can get to know about the cell count, the, the number of cells present over there, the type of cell, whether it is a columnar cell, cuboidal cell or flat cell, or you can even get to know about the layers. Now, epithelial cells can be a unilayered or multilayered. So there can be a unilayer or they can be multilayer. So the nuclei serve as an important role as an indicator. Right. Now, if you see that epithelial tissue, epithelial tissue is present over a connective tissue and this connective tissue below the epithelial tissue has a very important role. So this connective tissue contains blood vessels and this nutrients and oxygen are diff diffuse out from this blood vessel to the epithelial tissue because no matter how thick epithelial tissue is epithelial tissues does not contain any sort of blood supply so they are completely dependent on the underlying connective tissue for this nutrient supply this underlying connective tissue in case of digestive system respiratory system and ur urinary system is known as the lamina propria Right. So this underlying connective tissue is known as the lamina propria. Right. Now, the junction between lamina propria and the epithelial tissues, there we can see there is a condensation of the lamina propria in a manner that it forms a semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable membrane-like structure. Not exactly a membrane, membrane-like structure. This semi-permeable membrane-like structure is known as the basement membrane. This basement membrane is an important feature of the epithelial tissues and in subsequent videos we will discuss in details about the basement membrane. Now basement membrane provides a platform for arrangement of the epithelial tissues as well as marks the differentiation between epithelial tissues and the connective tissue underlying it. Right. Now based on this presence of the basement membrane, we can define the polarity of the cells of epithelial tissue. Now what is the polarity? Now the side of the cells which face the basement membrane is known as the basal surface or the basal pole. The side which faces the opposite to basal pole is known as the apical pole. So these poles are known as apical pole. Right. And the other surfaces like these surfaces are known as the lateral pole or lateral sides. Right. Now if you see based on the type of function of the cells, the transporter or membrane proteins in the, basal, in the apical pole as well as in the basal pole, they vary the type and number of different proteins. Now, sometimes the apical pole can have certain modifications. For example, certain apical poles, there can be infoldings of the cell membrane, which can give rise to something known as the brush border epithelium. Right. Or there can be certain projections, mechanical structures, which are known as the cilia. Right. So based on the different functions, different structures present in the apical pole, different 
arrangement in the basal pole and in the lateral sides the cells have something known as intercellular junctions This gives us a brief overview about the epithelial cells. Now in the subsequent videos, we will be discussing in details about the different sort of epithelial cells that we have and we'll learn the function of different epithelial cells. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, share this video among your peers and friends of medical school and college. And by any chance, if you are new to the channel, please do hit the subscribe button, press the bell icon and put the notification to all so that you never ever miss a video from my channel. Until then, bye bye. See you in the next one.